Hey guys, Madison here, back for another Film Friday, and it is time for my Western of the Month. This month on the channel, I am watching The Big Country, starring Charlton Heston and Gregory Peck. So what happened was, this, this was one of my executive decisions. A Madison pick, if you will. There was no poll for this, but if you've been following my channel, you will have noticed that in the past month I've watched Roman Holiday and Ben-Hur. Before I had watched either of those two movies, I was not aware of, I had not seen their movies, Gregory Peck or Charlton Heston. They were, that was completely my introduction to them. I was informed by some attentive viewers that Charlton Heston basically had like a cameo in Tombstone. He was the rancher, which I had never realized, so I had seen him before, I just didn't know it, <laughs> but I had never watched a movie with him as the lead, so uh, Ben-Hur was really my introduction to him. I enjoyed him so much in that movie. I enjoyed Gregory Peck a whole lot in Roman Holiday. I had never seen any of his movies either, so long story short, for the past several weeks I have had so many people knowing my love of westerns being like please watch The Big Country. It stars Charlton Heston and Gregory Peck both in the same movie and I was like okay I'm sold. <laughs> both of those actors in a western and then come to find out my editor informs me that this movie is actually directed like same director as Ben-Hur which I did not know when I chose it but yeah, he apparently directed this the year before Ben-Hur. Had no idea, so we kind of have a bit of a theme going here. But uh, yeah, having said all that, I'm obviously very excited to check out this movie and find out what it's all about, because the cast, the director, that's all I know about this movie. I got, I got no plot synopsis, so I am just along for the ride here, ready for another epic western. So without further ado, guys, let's jump in and let's watch The Big Country. Where is this wagon going? To an already established homestead or to visit someone? That looks like a going to visit someone coach. What a cute little town. It's so small. Very realistic. I mean, that's how tiny a lot of these old west towns were. Just a few little buildings with the prerequisite saloon, of course. One hour to eat, folks, while we change the horses. Let me help you, ma'am. Goodbye. Bye, Mr. McKay. Gregory Peck in color as opposed to black and white. An improvement, in my humble opinion. That man is a tall drink of water. <laughs> McKay? Yes? That is a cool looking horse back there. I love Overo paints. They're I'm so Steve pretty. Leach, foreman at Ladder Ranch. <gasps> How do you do? I brought Pet's buckboard and team for you. There he is. I don't know, Zod, wear that hat. One of these wild cowboys might shoot it off you. Thank you, Mr. Leach. Yeah. This is so cool seeing them in the same movie. <laughs> How'd you do, Mr. Leach? Boys, don't you know enough to tip hey. your hats when the foreman of Ladder goes by? Come on, let's get out of here. Those guys just look like trouble. Ah! Oh, if I'd known how much I was going to miss you, I'd have made you marry me in Baltimore. Don't you want me to ride back with you? We'd only hold you up. The Hennessy boys are in town. They've been drinking. We'll be all right, Steve. Mm, I don't know about that. Just as you say, Miss Terrell. Thank you, Mr. Leach. A few moments later, <laughs> cue the cowboys giving them trouble. My friend, Julie Marigan. She's a local school teacher. Am I still your girl? You better be. Julie? She's gone. You know, I think I'm gonna like Julie. Well, that's weird. She just disappeared. Oh, there she is. Don't mind me, I'm just passing through. This is Jim. Well, I certainly hope so. <laughs> <laughs> you don't look like a sailor. I didn't say he was a sailor. I said he was a ship's captain. But honestly, darling, you do look funny out here in those clothes. Well, they made it out of town, no trouble, but I'm not gonna not gonna speak too soon till they arrive at their destination. <laughs> Yep, here we go. There's Pat Terrell in her Eastern Dew. Let's give him a welcome. Crack oh. We all knew this was coming. Oh. This is like one of those random spawns in Red Dead Redemption. You're just riding along peacefully and all of a sudden these guys Local step trash. out of nowhere. Riding, here to cause trouble. Looks like they want to talk. Well, don't stop. Go right on through them. Yeah, don't stop. Yeah! 
Smart woman. Let's go after them. Oh, great. And that guy just caught up. Oh, boy. Things are about to get interesting. <laughs> if you're too drunk to know which foot should go in the stirrup, you probably shouldn't get on the horse. That's actually kind of impressive that he can do that while drunk. <laughs> it just got more impressive. <laughs> oh my goodness. I sure do like your hat. All right, that's enough. Oh goodness. Don't drag him. Don't let me out of here! All right, turn him loose. It's tough. He ain't much of a man. At least they didn't drag him. I was, that's what I was afraid of. So humiliated. Don't worry about it. Greenhorns always have to get knocked around a little. He took it well. I didn't want to let it get serious. Jim, you didn't think that was serious? <laughs> not really, no. Well, aren't you even angry? No. Oh. He's very chill about the whole thing. Not very good shots, are they? Or maybe this is a better hat than I thought. Well, that was eventful. <laughs> Glad we're getting there. We'll be there before dark. Hey, where are you going? Well, I'm in a mood to go court. The school mom? How are your lessons coming? <laughs> this is gonna be interesting. Don't sneak up on her. Oh my gosh. Oh! Surprised you, didn't I? <laughs> Thought she was gonna drop something. What do you want? I just dropped by to see how you was. You ought to keep your door locked. That's kind of a temptation in a land of men. That's soup, ain't it? It's kind of thin. Dude. Don't stick to your ribs like beef and beans. Manners. But it ain't bad. You know, Julie, I can just picture us, you cooking, me eating, happy as two little doggies at a water hole. I'm enchanted. That's another thing I like about you, teacher. All them words you know. Why is this giving me Belle and Gaston vibes? Will you get out of here? <laughs> Let go of me. You're scared, ain't you? I like a woman that's scared of me. What? <laughs> you must be drunk. All right, teacher. I like a woman who's scared of me. Red flag. <laughs> the Durrells ain't no friends of ours. School is over for today, teacher. But I'll be back. <laughs> Major Bell and Gaston vibes. <laughs> what a pretty place this is. Look at that house. Oh my goodness. Oh yeah, these people are rolling in the dough. <laughs> Buenos dias, senor. Buenos dias. Yo me llamo Ramon Gutierrez. How many head of cattle do you have here? Además, no me importa. You speak Spanish? No. <laughs> Saddle up a good horse for Mr. McKay. Yes, sir. How well you ride? Oh, I've ridden some in the east. Ramon, put him up on old thunder. Thunder? I don't know. That sounds like you might be a little too much horse for this guy. <laughs> for old Jim. I'm just gonna be staring at that paint, guys. He's so pretty. Anytime you're ready. Why is everybody coming to watch? Is that horse gonna buck him off? Nice day, isn't it? Well, some other time, Leech. <laughs> Jim is no fool. He picked up on it. We got a chuck wagon horse down the big barn. Morning, Jim. Morning, Major. Oh! <laughs> Yeah, Leech was trying to put Jim in the dirt. Morning, Major. The boys always try to put a stranger on Old Thunder. Don't let anything Steve Leech said bother you. Oh, he doesn't bother me. He's a fine boy. I raised him. Jim, I'm glad to have this chance to talk to you alone. He doesn't like Jim because he likes Pat. That's her name, right? Frankly, I feared an elopement back there in Baltimore. I think I owe it to you that I'm to have the pleasure of seeing her married in this house. Pat tells me that you're something of an authority on weapons. I thought you might like to have these. Dueling pistols. Now, this is mighty kind. Wow. Just about the finest I ever saw. Wonderful. Wonderful balance. It's a good thing that wasn't loaded. <laughs> They've been used. Yes, they belong to my father. You know, no one remembers exactly what that last duel was about. Alice is a trash. They live like a pack of wild dogs. They're a pest, a plague. It'd be a blessing for this country if the flood would wipe them off the face of the earth. All right. <laughs> this man has strong feelings about that family. Oh, I overslept. And on your first morning, too. You look... 
<laughs> it's like, well, this is awkward. Well, I thought that I was up early until I went out walking. Oh, no, on ladder, the people wake up the roosters. <laughs> Ooh, what's this? Ooh, pistols and coffee. Morning, Pat. Morning, Steve. Where are you off to? Little hunting expedition. You and I will ride out and survey the family acres. I don't believe Mr. McKay cares much for horses. Don't tell me they got you on old thunder this morning. <laughs> they tried. They tried. <laughs> Mr. McKay said some other time, whatever that means. It means some other time. Oh, darling, everybody tries to ride old thunder. I do? Why? Why? I don't know. They just always do. Because they're stupid. What are you hunting today, Mr. Leach? Hennessy's? Should be glad Jim smelled out the, the trap. Pat, didn't you tell the Major that there was no real trouble yesterday until you reached for that rifle? No. I don't think it would have made any difference. You can tell him if you want to. Well, this is awkward. You don't mean that you're actually going to go out and shoot somebody because of what happened yesterday? Uh, just teach him a little lesson. Oh, they're definitely going to shoot somebody. You'd be doing me a great favor if you'll call this off and forget the whole thing. Well, cut Buck Hennessy out for you. You can settle with him yourself. There's nothing to settle. Not this way, anyway. Now, look, Jim. Yeah, this is a bit dramatic. You can't call a policeman here. You have to be your own law. You're riding on the Hennessy's for reasons of your own, not because of anything that happened to me. That's true. He just was looking for an excuse. <laughs> Trouble in paradise. She ain't happy. I mean, she's encouraging the feud. She's encouraging the trouble and the violence. And the way she is, I'm wondering why she's even with Jim, because they're like complete opposites. And despite the whole opposites attract slogan, most times that's not the case. You gotta have something in common. I don't know how this is gonna go down, but I'm gonna be shocked if someone doesn't get shot. Where's Rufus? He ain't here. See if she's lying, Steve. That's every one of these shacks. You stay out of this house! <laughs> Well, now who's acting like wild coyotes? <laughs> We've got some Hatfields and McCoy stuff going on yourself, here. Major. <laughs> He's not in there. <laughs> and now, that's provocation right there. <laughs> Hitting the water supply. Mighty fine on your horse, but someday somebody's gonna pull you off. Tell Rufus the next time I'll burn the place to the ground. Buck ain't around here, Major. Look all over, Kate. Fine. Come on, man. Well, I'm not thinking particularly highly of either family at the moment. <laughs> That's a pretty Appaloosa. Come on. Yes, Mr. McKay. Come on. No. Come on. No. Is he going to try to get on him? <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> Why you want to ride him now? Hey. Uh -oh. oh my goodness, I'd be scared to death of that horse. <laughs> this is strictly between you and me and the horse, right? I don't like horses that bite. That's a that's a no no for me. No one must know. All right. All right. I've been there, done that. Not again. <laughs> Any advice? Yes, don't do it. Thanks. Cast off, I'm aboard. I have a bad feeling about this. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that horse just doesn't want to be rode, does he? Oh my goodness. Well, to his credit, that's pretty cowboy of him to keep trying to get back on that horse. He's got grit. He ain't giving up. Where's Buck? He let out early this morning. There are women and children here. Take them down to the livery stable. Let's go. Getting a taste of their own medicine. Get away those roosters here about this. You people gonna let him get away with this? You gotta let him ride into town and take it over like they own it? <laughs> well, it's called Western justice. You don't dish it out if you ain't gonna take it. <laughs> 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 
Meanwhile, <laughs> attempt number 20. <laughs> he is going to be so beat up and sore for like a month. <laughs> Maybe more. I thought it was finally over, but nope. <laughs> he needs to sit down in the saddle. Sit down instead of jumping up like that, bouncing so much. Did he do it? He did it! Way to go, Jim. Despite your poor form, you did it. <laughs> He's a cowboy. Mucho what are they doing in there? Just beating the crap out of them? That's enough, Steve. Let's go. All right, Major. Good day, Mr. Griggs. And he just hid out in that wagon that whole time. There's plenty of room out here. It's a big country. I know exactly how you feel. I don't like violence one bit better than you do. Uh-huh. Today had to be done. Hello, Jim. <laughs> Julie was my welcoming committee. Now, the best little horse trader in this country. It's a pretty dress. Oh, Jim, I love you. I've been so miserable every minute without you. What have you been doing all day? I wasn't very happy with him that morning. Well, I uh, sort of got the feel of the country. Everybody's waiting for you downstairs. My daughter, Pat, she'd meet the man of her choice. And I want you to know that I heartily approve of that choice. And so I say, welcome, Jim McKay. Steve's over there seething with jealousy. To this state and to this house. Thank you, Major. There you are, Jim. Your party. I'm really wondering where they're going with this because Julie being there and Steve Leach being there kind of throws a wrench in things that I'm like are they gonna pull like a switcheroo and Jim ends up with Julie and Steve ends up with Pat I don't know I could be totally wrong I just feel like those two characters are there on the outskirts for a reason I don't know where that's all heading yet may I certainly you're hurting my hands Steve well, Mr. McKay, I like this country. <laughs> well, I like it very much. Did you ever see anything so big? Well, yes. Yeah. What? A couple of oceans. <laughs> I declare. Excuse me. <laughs> May I have the pleasure, Major? Certainly, Jim. Thank you, Julie. No sooner did I say that than... May I have the privilege? I reckon you've got a right, Major. What'll I do if he decides not to settle here? I'll make a terror out of him yet. <laughs> hmm. We're about to have some party crashers. You set foot in Blanco Canyon once more, and this country's gonna run red with blood. If you want to start, here. Start now. What's the matter? Can't you shoot a man facing you? I hope he doesn't go get those dueling pistols. I'll make it easy for you. Here's my back. Well, you certainly set a beard full. It was actually loaded. I promise you that this sort of thing will never happen again. Music. Well, Jim, now you see what I mean. A savage like that, it's dog eat dog. Well, excuse me. Yeah, Jim knows what he did now. And Jim does not approve. The old man's looking for you. You want me, Pa? Before you was born, I did. Ouch. I paid a visit to my school teacher. You're a liar. She was a turtle. We was sparking and kissing. Julie Merrigan's a lady. Maybe. But she's sweet on me, Pa. You're deluded. <laughs> be, there's a side to you that I ain't never seen. You ain't lying to me again, are you, boy? There ain't no cause to lie. Maybe I'm smarter than you think, Pa. Oh, yeah, he's lying. She owns big money. I ain't forgetting that. Keep after her. Be nice. Treat her right. Take a bath sometime. Maybe we got us something here. Yeah, Treat I get her the right, feeling Jimmy. that Julie's gonna be having fun Right, I that. <laughs> Yeah, Pa, I will. Buck wouldn't know manners if they slapped him in the face. You tell Pat and the Major that I may be out overnight. I've got everything I need, and they shouldn't worry. All right. Oh, my. He's getting the full, authentic experience. He's roughing it. Come on. Show me the way he went. He must be lost. Yeah, that'd be a real sure enough shame. Get out of here. I can see you two were just plain made for each other. Whoa. Poof. <laughs> Is 
this gonna be Julie's house? Yeah. <laughs> She's going in guns blazing. <laughs> Better watch your step up there. Hold it right there. <laughs> <laughs> what in the world are you doing here? Just haunting an old house, ma'am. It's too noisy for a ghost. <laughs> Where's Pat? Surely you're not riding around here alone. If you're going to tell me this is a big country, I'm going to be disappointed in you. But it is a big country, isn't it? Why don't you come down and visit for a while? I'll get my horse. Intriguing. Very intriguing. The plot thickens. No luck, huh? Not a sign of him, Major. Well, you don't just give up. We'll take every man we can spare. All right, let's go. Meanwhile, he's just chilling. <laughs> he's a rough man, Steve. The whole country's betting on what will happen when he and Buck Hennessy finally fight. On oh, my last voyage, we had a man fall overboard. Crew was making bets as to which would get to him first, the lifeboat or the sharks. What happened? It was hard to tell who won. Both sides claimed the money. Shall I go on? Go on. The boat got the man, but the sharks got the legs. Oh my gosh. Now let me tell you one. There was a Comanche massacre. They took the survivors and buried them alive up to their necks. Shall I go on? Go on. In ant hills. <laughs> Red ant hills. That was a strange transition. Music kind of drowning out the dialogue. Now, what was the point of your story? <laughs> well, how'd you like to show me around? Do we ride or do we walk? Mr. McKay, any ranch that you can see on foot just isn't worth looking at. This is definitely a meet, a meet cute, guys. This is happening. <laughs> I called it. <laughs> they have way better chemistry than Jim and Pat. Well, here it is. It's a present from the King of Spain to my great-grandfather. Hey, truck? No. Catfish. Catfish, I'm sold. I'm convinced no one on this planet loves catfish more than I do. Major Terrell would refuse to give water to the Hannesses. What does it take to become a rancher? Well, the land first, of course. Cow herd, good bulls, and about a hundred miles of fence. hundred miles? Well, sure, this is a big, big country. country. <laughs> I'll pay you whatever it's worth. The Hannesses can take water whenever they need it. It would be a wonderful wedding present, Jim. That's right. And you wouldn't really be losing the place. If it's ours, in a way, it's still yours. Oh, it's still going to be hers. Because she's going to be Mrs. McKay. Call it now. <laughs> All right. You bought yourself a ranch. Mm. And we know Pat's not wanting to leave her family land. You're a very persuasive man, Mr. McKay. Let's head back to the cottage and throw up a paper before I change my mind. And she might be mad that Jim didn't even talk to her about it first. She's gonna be like, why? I want to live here, close to my daddy. I'm rooting for Jim and Julia so hard now that I'm gonna be disappointed if it doesn't happen. <laughs> I don't know where else to look. Hey. Don't shoot, boys. I'll come peaceable. We've been looking for you since yesterday. Do you mean to say that they've been out on a wild goose chase? We've been driving ourselves crazy for nothing. Yes. Getting lost out here can be dangerous. I wasn't lost, Major. You were the lostest looking thing I've seen in 10 years. If it's a fight you want. You're just not good enough for it. I am to prove it right here. Pat seems a little intrigued by the idea. You aren't going to prove anything with me, Leech. I'm not playing this game on your terms, not with horses or guns or fists. See, she's like, she's disappointed. She wanted him to get in a fist fight. She's immature. Her and Steve deserve each other. I said what I said. Jim's the bigger man here. He needs the more mature lady, AKA Julia. Like every scene they have together, Pat's just disappointed in him. Like I see no chemistry. She doesn't like any decision he makes. Don't you want to hear where I've been? You let him call you a liar. I've never been so humiliated in my life. Calm down, Pat. There's no reason Don't for you, you to be so- Don't you care what people think? No, I'm not responsible for what people think. Only for what I am. That's a good answer. Do you like to have people think of you as a... A coward, why don't you say it? I'm not going to spend the rest of my life demonstrating how brave I am. You've already demonstrated that quite fully enough. Huh. All right, I'll move into town first thing in the morning. I think we both need a little time to think this over. I think that could be a very fine idea. Good night. Oh yeah, the breakup's happening, guys. It's happening. They mix about as good as oil and water. 
lost again? <laughs> I'll be leaving here in the morning, Leech. Oh, I don't know why you thought you had to come say goodbye. Goodbye that I have in mind will take a little more room than we have in here. Is he wanting to fight him now? We got maybe half a million acres. You just go pick out any little spot. I'll be right with you. I'd like this to be strictly between us. I can see how you'd feel that way. All right. Jim is an interesting man. He was like, I'm going to ride old Thunder, but on my terms. And now he's like, I'm going to fight you, but on my terms. And no one's going to know about it. Now, McKay, you're a bigger fool than I thought you were. I tell you the truth, that just didn't seem possible. I honestly don't know who's going to win. <laughs> I feel like Jim might end up winning just because he refuses to quit. Like, he just keeps getting back up like he kept getting back on that horse. I don't know. Wow. Steve is not even landing a punch. There he goes. I love how this is shot. Just two guys duking it out in this giant, huge landscape. They might just fight to a stalemate. Steve should have a newfound respect for him now. Come on. All I can say, McKay. You take a hell of a long time to say goodbye. Uh, just about finished. If it's all right with you. <laughs> it's all right with me. This is one of those moments where I just shake my head and go, men. <laughs> now tell me, Leech, what did we prove? Huh? Nothing much except Leech should respect him now and be like, okay, he is a real man. He fought me all the way to a stalemate. He ain't no dude. And I love that Jim did it with no spectators. So there was no pride won or lost. I mean, there was on a personal level, but like they didn't have Pat watching, like trying to prove themselves for her. I love that Jim excluded her from that. And so that she wouldn't like get to, you know, be happy that she got him to fight on her behalf. Like he took that from her. I love it. <laughs> We're getting near the river. Let's go. Why are we doing this, Steve? Major's orders, that's why. I ain't siding with the Hanneses, but chasing thirsty cattle away from water just don't seem right. It's not right. Look, cowboy, you'd be better off if you just do what you're told and don't ask any questions. In other words, don't think about right and wrong, because we're definitely doing wrong. <laughs> Oh boy. This your stinking idea, Leech? Tell your daddy he's watered his last steer in the big muddy. Shine up the major's boots. Leech should feel mighty ashamed of himself. Why ain't you dead? What could we do, Pa? There was 20 of them. Just a few of us. Them cows is worth more than the whole lot of you. <laughs> we gotta get them back to water because they won't last two days in this dry spell. We got to figure a way to get them turl men away from the big muddy right now. This is all starting to come to a head. I ain't had any peace since Clem Morgan died. Go get that girl. If she's sweet on you like you claim, it'll be easy. If she ain't, drag her here by the hair. Oh, gosh. Julie didn't ask for this, okay? <laughs> she just wants to be left alone. Oh, Julie, he's not the man I remembered. He backed down from Steve in front of everybody. He wouldn't even get on Old Thunder. He mentioned about having trouble with a horse. I want to ask him home something. Look, I know that he didn't ride him. Everybody here knows it. <laughs> this time you're wrong. Come on, let's go find the mom. No, he's just not going to do all that... All that stuff to please you. Did Mr. McKay ride Old Thunder? No, I don't think so. Ramon, why did Mr. McKay ask you not to tell anybody? I don't know, maybe because he... <laughs> that ain't no fair. <laughs> so he did ride him. Oh, yes, he don't give up. A man like him is very rare. If he was going to ride the brute, why didn't he do it when it meant something? Well, he did ride it when it meant something to him. Yeah. But if he loved me, why would he let me think he's a coward? If you love him, why would you think it? Exactly. How many times does a man have to win you? Well, I think it's a downright deceitful way of acting. I'm glad he's gone. And you can go, too, if all you can think to do is criticize me. <laughs> I declare, the way you're sticking up for him, a person might think you were in love with him yourself. If you feel that way about him, why don't you go after him? I'm sure I don't care. You fool. 
The man loves you. Mm. While you were blaming him for everything, do you know what he was doing? Buying big muddy for you as a wedding present. I am not a Pat fan. I'm just, no. <laughs> Julia all the way. Hello, Jim. I wanted to talk to you about the big muddy. Well, I bought it with the understanding that it would be a wedding present for Pat. I don't want to keep it under false pretenses. Jim, you're making a mistake you're going to regret. It seems to me that when a man uproots his life and travels 2,000 miles, he must be very much in love. How can you change your mind? He thought he was. It goes much deeper than that. It's finished. I'm sorry. Now, what about the big muddy? Well, do you want me to take it back? No, I want to keep it. Work it. Build it up. I'd like to go ahead and have the deed recorded. All right. Thanks, Julie. Oh, it's happening, guys. It's happening. <laughs> All the pieces are falling into place. Oh no, right when he leaves, they're gonna come and take her away. Jim, you gotta go save her. Pat, come in. I just came to return these pistols. They were a gift. I want him to have them. I don't think it'll work out between us, Pat. Oh, Jim, you can't mean that. Oh, I think he does. If only you told me, explained to me. You didn't give me much of a chance, Pat. Even when you wrote Old Thunder. Me, not a word. Why? You knew because how much it meant to me. That. Everybody laughing at me. She's always like, me, but me, you me. Do it for me. Me, me, me. But there are some things that a man has to prove to himself alone. Jim, I love you. It'll never happen again. Oh, I need you so terribly. <laughs> oh, darling. Not when you thought he was a coward. <laughs> I haven't even told the major about my wedding present. I didn't buy the big muddy to make the major proud of me. Furthermore, I promised Julie that the neighbors could have all the water they need. Did I understand you to mean all the neighbors? Yep. <laughs> That includes the Hennessy's. You heard that filthy man insult my father with his lies. They were all lies. You know they were lies. No. You hate the Major. Oh, I don't know why I came here. You'll never see the day when you're half the man that Henry Terrell is. Never. I'm feeling so vindicated right now. <laughs> you guys have no idea. <laughs> I never liked her from the beginning. I was like, oh, this. And now I've just been so vindicated and not liking her <laughs> at all. Team Julie. Let's go, teacher. Sit down. You let Henry Turrell run my cows off of the Big Muddy and 24 of them died of thirst before I could take a breath. I what? let Henry Turrell. What was she supposed to do about it? I aim to get my cows back to water. Now, I aim to do this thing nice and legal. Take off your hat. Gonna try to force her to marry him? Oh. How would you like to marry my boy Buck there? And then we could have the Big Muddy all in the family, huh? You must be out of your mind. Yes, yes, he is. Maybe I could learn you a little, teacher. Sweet on you, huh? Just sign this. It's a bill of sale of the Big Muddy at a, at a fair price. She can't. She's already sold it. Now take me home. What's going on here? For six years I've been trying to get you to... And now you just sign it like that. Mm-hmm, because it doesn't mean nothing. Big Muddy isn't mine to sell, Mr. Hennessy. I sold it to Jim McKay. The dude. Trying to make a fool of me, girl? He's not marrying a tell. What happens here tomorrow is on your head. No, it's not, buddy. Julie and Jim are like the only two that are blameless in this. It's no use. A coyote couldn't slip through that canyon. There ain't no Hennessy sleeping tonight. <laughs> He's just always sitting down eating everybody else's food. I was saving this for Terrell's neck. But in a manner of speaking, it'll serve the same purpose. Does everybody know the signals? Yeah. You bet. Right. Here we go. It's going down. That better not be Buck, or I swear. This man? Can't stand him. I hope she has a gun or something. Or that Jim gets there. Somebody do something. Do I make you sick? Do I? <sighs> Crawl! You act like a dog. Crawl like one. Crawl, I said. Crawl! Yeah, get him. He's a pig. You pressed me for the last time, hear me? Someday I'll have to kill you. Yeah, mister, this whole situation was your fault. You shouldn't have kidnapped her in the first place and that whole thing wouldn't have happened. <laughs> Poor Julie. I feel so bad for her, y'all. She didn't deserve any of this. Scared me, y'all. 
It's like, please don't let this happen to her. She deserves so much better. Oh my goodness. No, thanks very much. I'll be back in a day or two. Thank you. Now don't get lost. <laughs> Mr. McKay! Oh, Ramon, what brings you to town? Oh, that's a big trouble. Very bad. The major. Please come and save Julie. Here comes the entourage. We're going in. Major, when I think of that poor defenseless girl and their filthy hands, we put an end to them, once and for all. Where are those other men you sent for? Somebody coming, Major. Thank goodness Jim is here. <laughs> the sole voice of reason. You're staying here. I'm going in. If you want to stop me, you'll have to use that. You're not here to get Julie Maragon out. You're just using this for an excuse to start your own private war. If you shoot Jim McKay in the back, you're a cold-blooded murderer, Major. Major! He can do it. Let him go. If he wants to get himself killed, let the Hennessys do it. Come on, Jim. It's the dude. Stay here. Right. You're a brave man, Jim. How do you like Blanco Canyon? Hell of a place for a sailor. You want to see him dead right in front of your eyes? And you tell him you come here because you wanted to and you ain't leaving, see? <sighs> you let on anything else, I'll kill him. I hate this guy. I've come to take Miss Maragon home. You can have all the water you want. Toy pistols. The Hennessy's will have no peace. This is nothing but a personal feud between two selfish old men. Yep. Henry Terrell and you. Tell him, Jim. I've had enough You're of mistaken, your... Mr. McKay. I came to visit for a few days. If you don't show yourself, a lot of men are going to be killed. Can't help that. Why didn't you just go away? What is it that you're afraid of? Nothing. Jim, he's so smart. I love it. I'm not afraid. I come here all the time. Me and Julie's old friends. Now, why don't you just get going? Now, wait a minute. I'm not leaving here without her. You're trying to protect him. Why? Because your son is a piece of crap. <laughs> That's why. Now, Buck, are you blind? Oh, please go, Jim! Please! Buck! <laughs> Get him, Jim, get him. Look out, Jim! You don't shoot an unarmed man, not while I'm around. Give him a gun! Come on up here, both of you! Oh, the dueling pistols. I was wondering when that was gonna come into play. The vents will have to be cleared out. I'll do it for you if you like. I've been handling guns like this, flintlock and caplock, since before you were born. Follow me, gentlemen. Oh my goodness. The undeclared love, but they both just know I love it. <laughs> you suppose my kid could have gotten through? Well, that's no concern of ours. I just can't do it, Major. Why, damn, you are yellow. You call me whatever you want, but I'm not shooting any more Hennessy's for you. You go, Steve. You tell him. I'm finished. You're finished, all right. I don't need you on this trip. All right, men, mount up. I never thought Steve would be a voice of reason. I said mount up. You're all alone, Major. I see. I'm all alone in this. All right. I've been alone before. Major. Major. Don't go after him. He's loyal to a fault. And all those guys are loyal to Leech. Goodness. If either man tries to beat the signal, it's my duty to shoot him down like a dog and I'll do it. So help me. This thing's gonna be done right and proper. Understand? Yeah. Not if Buck has anything to say about it. Your choice. Ah, uh, back to back. And keep your fingers off of the trigger. Clear the way there. I can feel you sweating right through my shirt. I think you're the one sweating, Buck. Now you turn on ready. Fire when I tell you. Ready! Come on, Jim. Hey! I warned you, you dirty load. All right. Now it's my shot. Hmm. Go ahead. Fire! He's a sniveling coward. Go on, shoot! Jim's already won. He didn't even have to shoot him. Don't you do it, Buck. Had 
had to shoot his own son. <laughs> he said, I'm gonna have to kill you one day. I told you I'd do it, but you wouldn't believe me. Damn your soul, I told you. He had no choice, but it's still just heartbreaking. Man, the silence. Let them pass. It's a heavy moment. Get my horse. What is gonna happen now? Hey, come up. They're like sitting ducks in there. Get back here! Get off those horses! Dang it, Steve. We'll get killed on the Major's behalf. You said Henry Turrell and me. You were right. Come on, keep moving. I'm gonna resolve this thing once and for all. Hold your fire! Henry Turrell, this is you and me. I'm a coming down. Here I come, Hennessy. I'm like holding my breath, guys. They're on a collision course. Are they gonna do a duel or are they both gonna walk away? Oh my goodness. So pointless. Well, I guess it's finally over. Jim, you did everything you could, man. I love them. <laughs> oh my goodness, I loved that. What a perfect ending. I love that they didn't do some big, like, corny, overdrawn-out scene at the end with Jim and Julie, like, declarations of love and all this dramatic stuff like they didn't even have to kiss at the end we knew like that look between them was perfect just having them both smile at each other and then ride off at the end was absolutely perfect wouldn't have changed a thing that ending confrontation between uh mr hannesey and mr Terrell? I'm, i haven't seen their names in writing so i'm just going off of how they sounded forgive me if i'm wrong uh, but their final confrontation was very poignant and sad and tragic. And yeah, just seeing the pointless bloodshed of it all. And Jim tried everything he could to prevent it, but there was just nothing he could do. One thing I loved from that whole like ending sequence in the canyon was the contrast between Pat earlier in the film wanting him to fight, wanting him to fight Leech to prove himself to her and like prove that he was this big strong man and that he wasn't a coward and he walked away. The contrast between that and then him being so willing to fight for Julie at the end was perfection. Like she did not want him to fight for her. She was trying to, she was trying to do everything she could to save him from Buck. And he knew that, he saw that, he saw that real love there and that she didn't want him to fight. She was trying to save his life. And that was what made him be willing to put his life on the line and fight for her without question. That was perfect. I loved that. <laughs> that was so good, y'all. What a big epic western and there really there really was no gunplay there was no big fighting until the very end of the movie like that was it there was just the whole movie was just this great uh, like character study of all these different people and their relationships with each other and building and building and building that tension to the final confrontation up at the very end, and I loved it. <laughs> I was not bored for a single second. I was totally invested in these characters, especially Jim and Julie. Like, those were the two that just won my heart. I loved them. Like, they were the two just really good people in the movie. Like, this movie was full of morally gray people doing 
morally questionable things, but those two, Jim and Julie, were like the moral compass of the whole thing. Like, they were the two people that were the voices of reason. They were trying to do the right thing in the midst of this crazy feud. And yeah, I started shipping them pretty early on. I think it was at the party when um, I started realizing like, or it was a little before the party. I can't remember when I made the comment, but I was like, wait a second, is he going to end up with Julie instead of Pat? Because I was already starting to not like Pat. I was getting a bad vibe, bad feeling about her. And I was just seeing that those two had no chemistry. Like Jim and Pat, they just did not go oil and water, like I said. She was disapproving of his every choice he made. They were just completely different people, wanting different things, and she was immature. He was he was so far beyond her <laughs> in his way of like wanting to solve problems in his maturity, like being being mature enough and wise enough to walk away from a fight, but also having the wisdom to know when he had to step up and fight, knowing when to walk away, when to when to confront the baddie, if you will, like, that was so good. I loved the story, and I saw at the beginning that this was based on a novel, and now I'm like, I have another novel to add to my list that I need to read. I wonder how true this was to the novel, or if there were any, any big deviations from the novel. I have no clue. But wow, I... Early on, I was sort of like just straight up not liking Charlton Heston's character, Steve. I didn't like how he forced himself on Pat and he seemed to just, he was the, he was the jealous like third wheel, like the jilted <laughs> lover on the, uh, on the outskirts there, but although I don't think him and Pat were ever really a thing, maybe they were, I don't know, but he was just kind of the jealous guy hating Jim the whole time, but I ended up kind of starting to like him by the end with that respect he finally had for Jim after they fought and him finally being a voice of reason to the major like trying to talk him out of this and the major just wouldn't listen and Steve he was loyal to a fault I would not have ridden into that I would not have ridden into that canyon after the major I would have been like okay see ya <laughs> but Steve rode in after him uh, I'm glad he survived I, I assume he got like shot it looked like kind of in the gut but he seemed okay at the end. I'm assuming he's fine. Um, I hope so. Because I feel like there's hope for him. I feel like he has potential to become a better man, you know? Um, without the Major's negative influence on him. Because the Major raised him, so it's kind of like... I, I still... Steve is responsible for the kind of man he became, but also he was raised by the Major, so I have some sympathy for him, like... Maybe without that negative influence in his life, he will move on and become a better person. But yeah, man, my, my mind is kind of mush because that was like a almost three hour movie and there was a lot. But what I do know is that it was incredible. That was an amazing epic Western. I loved the locations, the sweeping shots, the landscape of it. I, I know I always say this, but every time, if you can do it on location, if you can do it without, I mean, this is 1958, so there is no CGI, but if you can do it authentically without the CGI, without just all the green screen, it just, it adds such a grit and an authenticity, especially in a Western that I think is so important. Um, I know if you're shooting a sci-fi fantasy, it gets a little harder sometimes, uh, but for something like a Western, I just really appreciate all the work that goes into like shooting on these big epic locations. Yeah, the, the score in this movie was fantastic. I loved the very like Hatfields and McCoys vibe of the movie with the two feuding families. I guess that's very Romeo and Juliet as well. Although Jim, our leading man, was not, he was not part of this feud. Um, and our, who ended up being our leading lady, Julie, was not like, they, they weren't members of the two feuding families. They were two people on the outside who got caught up in it and were trying to bring peace. And I guess they did, but not in the way they hoped to. <laughs> I think the only character I 100% hated, like, just, I mean, Pat, I was not a fan of Pat, but the only character I 100% hated was so glad he died was Buck. Like, that guy was just irredeemable. He was making the wrong choice at every turn. He was, he was a pig. I'm going to say it. He was a pig. Uh, what he tried to do to Julie and 
then trying to take that guy's gun and shoot Jim, like no honor. Buck deserved what he got, but I really felt bad for his his own father having to shoot him. Like that was peak tragedy. Yeah, that whole everything that happened with Mr. Hannessy having to kill his own son and then the Major and Mr. Hannessy killing each other, it was very sad and very tragic. But I'm glad that overall we got a happy ending. We've, we've got Jim and Julie riding off into the, sorry to say the sunset, but it wasn't sunset, riding off into the wide blue yonder together. <laughs> um, I was rooting for that from very early on and I'm so excited that it happened. I was not sure. I was like, are they trying to angle for like, Jim and Pat working out their issues and getting back together. I was like, I hope not. Thank goodness they weren't. The love triangle worked out the way I was hoping, which doesn't always happen. A lot of times I root for romantic pairings that don't happen, but thank goodness this one worked out. <laughs> thank you so much to everyone who recommended this movie to me. You were right. I thoroughly enjoyed it, and this is definitely one I'm going to have to watch again and again because it was so good. So thank you guys so much for recommending The Big Country to me. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I hope you guys enjoyed this reaction. And if you want to see the full length version of this reaction, the watch along is over on my Patreon link in the description below. Thank you so much guys as always for watching and I will see you guys next week for another Film Friday. Bye guys.